Today on WSRH Extra, we're seeing double. Also, the course is going all the way to Disney. Plus, for an exchange students, WSRH, WSRH Extra, Extra starts now. now. Guess what? What? I just adopted a new puppy. No way. I've wanted to adopt a new puppy for so long. How can I do this? Let's go to Alex Willingham for more on the story. Stray animals are becoming an increased problem in our community. In 2012, more than 200,000 shelter animals were euthanized before they could be adopted. Robin Medvest, a history teacher and a club sponsor of the Animal Rescue Club at Similar Ridge, wants to make a change. Um, I, I took over the sponsorship from Miss Bush and Basically, the inspiration just comes from wanting to do something uh, to rescue animals and help animals. Medveds leads the Hawks Animal Rescue Club, which meets on the third Tuesday of every month. Medveds took over the club because of her belief that everyone deserves a second chance. Uh, it's important um, in order to, you know, I think every person or animal deserves a safe and uh, happy life. And in order to do that, that's what we try to achieve. Cynthia Torres, a club student leader, was able to tell us more about the club. During the meetings, we talk about like future projects, and last year we sponsored an animal, so we talk about that. The club partners with many different organizations to help out the local animals without homes. The most recent sponsor is the Love A Pet Rescue. Students from the club were able to go and socialize with puppies who were recently rescued. The puppies were going to be euthanized, but the Love A Pet Rescue took them and are helping them find a new lovely family. If you want to learn more about the Hawks Animal Rescue Club, stop by room 3207 on the third Tuesday of every month. For WSRS Extra, I'm Alex Willingham. Connor, have you ever seen Double? Yeah, when I walk around school, I think I'm seeing the same people. Connor, they're called twins. Those are real? Yes, and Lori Jaime has more on the story. Going to school with a sibling can be tough, but could you imagine going to school with your twin? WSH News spoke with three sets of twins on our campus and found they each had different feelings about what it's like to go to school together. Yeah, we're like best friends. I mean, honestly, we tell each other everything. Sophomores Colin Lane Scruggs admit they don't always get along. We're like close. Blake and Kyle Hartz are seniors here at Seminole Ridge and they think being a twin has fashion benefits. Yeah, we share everything, but, but no, yeah, yeah we, we share those yeah, two. Yeah, yeah, we share everything. Yeah. Identical twins are often mistaken for one another, but Blake and Kyle say that it can be fun. I used to switch into uh, Mr. Abel's class and he just used to go home, and I used to just sit there in classroom. So. Mm -hmm. Juniors Christine and Joey Shergan are fraternal twins, and while they may not look alike, their twin bond is still strong. Yeah, yeah. not really, because I'm better. So. <laughs> Who has a state ring? I don't put that in. <laughs> I wonder what it's like to be a twin. I don't know, but it seems pretty cool. For WSRH News, I'm Lori Jaimez. So Natalie, what's your favorite animal? Um, definitely has to be a giraffe. What about you? Well, it's a toss-up between squirrels and turtles. Of course, Connor. Well, did you know that there was a new baby giraffe born at Lion Country Safari? Let's go to WSRH Extra Reporter Amber for more on the story. Lion Country Safari is a local attraction that many people overlook. It is home to thousands of animals, including two new additions, Nayara Nafari, the baby giraffe. We had two baby giraffes already born this year, um, over the summer. One was born in late June, and then the second one was born in July. It's a pretty amazing process to watch a, a female giraffe give birth. The one that was born in July was actually our largest giraffe calf that we've ever had here at Lion Country Safari. It was a 180-pound female calf. While human babies are gently cradled as they're born, a baby giraffe drops six feet to the ground due to the fact that the mother is standing up while giving birth. That six, seven foot fall that they have to the ground is actually very important. It helps to clear those airways of fluid, that, that, that trauma, that impact of hitting the ground. And it helps them so that they can take their very first breath. We had the opportunity to speak with Kimberly the giraffe keeper, who was there when Nayara and Nafari were born and has watched them develop. Watching them grow, like this, they grow, they grow, they grow, <laughs> you know, and by three months. And then, then before you know it, you're looking up at everybody and, and you're short watching the babies and the moms have the babies and it's a wonderful thing to be able to be a part of that. We actually capture 
the babies and make sure that they're healthy and fine and then we let them go. Lion Country Safari gives you a chance to see everything from rhinos to giraffes, but you can do more than just look at them. For $2.50, you can come to Lion Country Safari and feed a 3,000 pound giraffe. For WSRH News, I'm Amber. Did you know that our school is doing a foreign exchange program? That explains all the new unfamiliar faces in my classes. Let's go to David Bunting for more on the story. Many children can experience change at a young age. For Gustavo, it meant moving from his home family in Brazil. Gustavo is a junior here at Seminole Ridge, and he partook in a foreign exchange program. Oh, everything is different, so I'm trying to, to know everything. And, oh, I'm enjoying a lot, and it's fun. We also spoke with one of his teachers about how he is in class. He's very respectful, and he seems like he enjoys learning. He told us a variety of classes he enjoys. I enjoy uh, team sports, uh, English, and U.S. history. The foreign exchange program is a brilliant idea. Just think, would you go to another country in another school? Natalie, do you know how old the school is? Yeah, like 10 years old, right? Wait, how'd you know that? I read the scripts before we started recording. Oh, well for those of you who don't know, let's go to WSRH Extra Reporter Frank for the story. From bottom of the food chain to one of the best schools in the districts with our achievements in sports, band, and all our academies, Without a doubt, this has been a successful decade. Like the very own plants in our courtyard, no one knew what Seminole Ridge would grow up to be. Highway, we didn't have a road complete into the school, and so it was like scrambling uh, in our cars going up and down the little hills, and when it rained, it was uh, truly like going through uh, the backwoods. It was pretty interesting. Now, Ms. Brainerd, you're a student and teacher at Seminole Ridge. Can you tell us exactly what is it that makes this school so great? Uh, Seminole Ridge is really great because it's really a community. There's several teachers here that are still here from when I was here, and we all kind of are passionate about what we do here, and it's pretty great. Uh, first year we went 0-9. We lost the game due to a hurricane. Uh, we had 14 kids with broken bones. We had two kids tear their ACL. We had no seniors. It, it was a bit rough the first year. I, you know, I'd left Jupiter where we were 9-1 and one and ranked number three in the state, and we came out here with Coach Dickman, and, and I was like, man, are we doing the right thing? And and uh, the next year we won the spring game, and, and after that it just took off. Uh, the first year was very interesting because we were taking students who had been at Royal Palm Beach High School, Wellington High School, and maybe a couple of other schools around the area, and trying to get them to all realize that whatever school they came from didn't matter anymore because they were now Seminole Ridge Hawks. Um, I do think that very few people know how great uh, our school is. Um, I'm proud of everything that we've been able to accomplish and that we continue to grow. Um, and I do think we've got a great community spirit here in the school. Um, and it just it reaches out from our community. You know, if you grow up together, you're doing things together, you really get along, then that shows when you get here. And it's it, our students really are what makes Seminole Ridge great. Happy 10 year anniversary to Seminole Ridge for WSRH Extra. I'm Frank Agnes. I'll be coming around the mountain as she goes. Connor, oh, what, are, be, what are you doing? I'm practicing for the course. Are you just trying to go to Disney with them? No. Nah. Yeah. But I can sing good, too. And they need more guys this year. Let's go to WSRH Extra Reporter Snowball for more on that. I'll be coming around the mountain as she goes. Each year, Disney's Epcot holds a special candlelight music celebration and invites select course programs to perform. Every year, someone on Ridge Chorus goes out to perform. This year, they plan to go again, but something may be standing in their way. Really sad, because um, that's something that you always look forward to every year, so it would feel really weird not going. In past years, acceptance in a candlelight was based on a group's ensemble, but now the rules have changed. This year's course may not be eligible to go to candlelight because there are not enough boys, and students are not sure why. This no boys in chorus because they probably think it's too feminine. Some of the boys in chorus say they don't understand why it's not more popular this year. As a freshman, I was actually put into chorus, and I just sort of stayed with it because it seemed fun at the time. Uh, I was put into chorus as a freshman because, I don't know, they just put me in and I decided to stay. Some of the girls in chorus don't like the new candlelight changes. I can't blame the guys that are there, so. Um, I blame the boys a little bit because we aren't balanced. We have so many girls and just a little portion of boys, so 
We'll see how it turns out. For Deborah Strange News Extra, I'm Bernie Snowball. After a few accidents last year, a few new teachers came to guarantee that the Seminarge Auto Academy future looks bright. Let's go to WSRH news reporter Kelly for more on the story. Last year, the automotive shop got shut down after a pair of accidents. The academy fortunately reopened with two new teachers. We talked to Mr. Hardy about his new plans for the academy students. Uh, the biggest plan and opportunity is to get the shop opened up and allow any students that are interested in the automotive career to have an opportunity to really experience what uh, is what we consider a phenomenal opportunity for them. Uh, our shop is a very nice shop with lots of tools and equipment and really just kind of get them aware of the different careers they have available. Mr. Hardy enjoys working with the other new automotive teacher, Mr. Critchlow. Uh, Mr. Critchlow and I get along real well. Uh, both come from similar backgrounds. Unfortunately, he's from FSU, I'm from UF, so we're trying to work through that. The academy coordinator says that the two new teachers will fit in well. Well, they're already adapting well to our school. They're a wonderful addition to the Seminole Ridge Hawk family, and I'm really pleased with everything that they're doing over there right now. Two weeks ago when the shop opened up, the teachers made sure that the academy was safer for students and faculty, including an online safety course that all students must complete before going into the class. Well, every student that's uh, entered in the class has uh, completed a two-week online safety course, um, which is really getting them a good wide range of information for us. Uh, in addition to that, there's also the same test that Palm Beach State College uses. Uh, so it's, it's a good industry standard test, so they're very aware of what's expected of them. We're excited to see the new and improved Automotive Academy here at the Ridge. For WSRH Extra, I'm Kelly Matthews. Five, six, seven, eight. The Hawkshire camp is pretty great. Six, five, four, three. Let's go to Nick for more on the story. This past Friday, the Seminole Ridge cheerleading team brought on a couple of new, younger members. Um, we held a kids camp back in June, so we offered this year something new for the kids to go ahead and come cheer with us at our game, at one of our varsity games for one of the quarters. <laughs> We spoke with three of the varsity cheer captains about their personal experiences with their campers. I worked with a fifth grader and she was very cooperative. She learned everything pretty fast. She's uh, in the front row with me, so it shows she's pretty good. We've always done the kids camp, um, but this is the first year we're having them come cheer with our varsity girls. The girls are looking forward to a successful season with hard work and dedication. We wish the girls cheerleading team good luck this year, and for WSRH One, Extra, two, I'm Nick Seltzer. Go! It is now time for sports. Let's go to WSRH Sports anchor, Christina Costanza. Hi, Christina. Hi, Connor and Nat. While most kids this summer were having the time of their life, a varsity football player was praying to keep his little brother in his. Over the summer, um, we, we all went out to, um, we all went out to, um, to go shopping, and um, we bought my brother home. And he decided not to go back out with us because he went back down to his friend's house. And um, my mom called me like an hour later saying that my brother had got shot in the head with a, with a high-powered rifle pellet gun. Everyone knows Jalen Young as an athlete here at Seminole Ridge, but his brother at home looks up to him as a role model. And we rushed to the hospital and um, he was in critical condition for a while. The doctors, told, the doctors basically told us that he wouldn't live, that he was going to die. And it would be a miracle if he, if he lived and also lived with like nothing wrong with him. So um, he was shot in right above the right temple and it went through his skull and through the frontal lobe of his brain. And it stopped on the other side and it's still lodged in there today. Jalen's younger brother, Antonio, ended up having a miracle and being okay, but he does suffer from loss of memory and he cannot play football till the bone in the front of his skull grows back. Antonio tells us how him and his brother's relationship grew stronger. The relationship with my brother grew stronger because I've never seen him properly before. And then, like, he started taking to his practices and everything. Many people probably have yet to notice, though, that Jalen used to be number three for football and is now number 18. Jalen tells us why. Um, well, this upcoming season, my brother was just talking about number 18. Um, the coach actually got him to jersey number 18 two days before it happened. And that's what the number he was going to wear for his football season. So I decided to change my number from number 3 to 18 just to play for him. 
Jalen will continue the season playing his hardest and playing for his brother, who sadly cannot, till he has a full recovery. For WSRH Sports, I'm Christina Costanza. Thank you for tuning in to this week's segment of WSRH Extra. We now leave you with this week's Edit to the Beat by Caleb and Grant. Just cause everybody doing what they are